Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. We're looking at Psalm chapter 5. We notice here that David is facing a tremendous trial and challenge in his life, maybe the greatest ever. At this point, he is probably an older man. He has lost maybe the vitality and strength of his youth. And uh, he is now having to deal with his son bringing an insurrection against him. He's fleeing for his life and David prays. Now, I want you to notice, I'm convinced as you look through the Psalms, David always prays prayed. He he started each day with a time of fellowship and communion with his God, worshiping, praising, seeking the Lord for guidance and help every day. I never forget an elderly lady who was at our church in Holland, Michigan, and she made the statement, if you take the Lord's hand in the light, you don't have to look for it in the dark. When the darkness comes, you don't have to try to find him because you already have a hold of his hand in the light every day. That was the habit of David. That was the way David lived his life in communion to the Lord, beginning as a kid on the hillsides of Bethlehem, watching sheep. He learned to talk to his God and trust him to kill a lion, to kill a bear. And when he faced Goliath, he was prepared. He was ready. He had his trust in the Lord. And my friend, that's what we need to do every day. And so he starts out this psalm, remember, talking about how that he met with the Lord. My God, my King, I will speak to you in the morning. In the morning, I will lift up my prayer to you and look up. And then in verses 4 through 6, we see that we also learn in, as a part of our prayer that we want to please the Lord. For you're not a God that takes pleasure in wickedness. And so David knows he cannot live a wicked and evil and vile and deceitful life and expect God to hear him. But then in verse 7, he says, But as for me... So he's contrasting himself with the wicked in verses 4 through 6 that can't expect God to hear him. But when he lives in righteousness, he says, I will come to your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship towards your holy temple. Now, David couldn't be in Jerusalem at this point. He's been run out of Jerusalem. But he can look toward Jerusalem, the tabernacle where the presence of God has dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant. And my friend... We can always look to the Lord where he is seated on his throne in heaven and trust him. And David said, that's what I will do. And notice he said, in fear of you. He didn't come flippantly. He didn't come and just, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to. No, 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 no. God is an awesome God. We should tremble before him if we really know who he is. And then he says, lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me my face. So David prayed for guidance from the Lord. David prayed for justice in verse 9 and 10. There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. So David now prays for justice for the enemy. He, he actually... Has at the same time, he wanted mercy. He said, please don't kill my son Absalom. When that battle started, more fell by the woods and in the woods then fell by the sword, the scripture tells us in 2 Samuel 18 in that battle. David prayed that uh, his son, his, he would have mercy on his son. And then verses 11 and 12, we'll finish this chapter, but let all those Rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. And so David seeks and looks to the joy and blessings that only come from God, loving his name, reflecting on who he is, how great he is. And my friend, we can do that in the days of our trial and tribulation. Remember, take the Lord's hand in the light every day. And then as you face the 
trials of life, you can turn to him for guidance, for justice on those who are trying to hurt you. He'll take care of it. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And you can rejoice in him because you know his name and you love his name, his character and all that he stands for. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.